welcome to this live stream of the Mass of the Lord's Supper. We'd like to remind you that at beginning at 8 p.m. to midnight, we will have adoration, as is the tradition on Holy Thursday. That'll be following the Spanish liturgy, which will happen after this one. My name is Jake Dunn. I'm a seminarian of the Archdiocese of Dubuque. We're here in the chapel of the, of the Vianney House. There are more than 10 people gathered here, but that's because this is our home. It's a private residence, and so it's a private chapel to which the public are not ordinarily invited. Moreover, we are for the most part sheltering in place, going out only for exercise and essentials like grocery shopping. And when we go out, we keep our distance from others as far as possible, as well as washing our hands and avoiding touching our faces. In addition to our online studies, we are making a daily holy hour to pray for the people of the Archdiocese of Dubuque in this scary time. If you have particular intentions you would like us to pray for, please submit them on the coronavirus section of the Archdiocesan website. Directions for how to do that are on the bottom of the screen right now and will be shown again after this Mass has ended. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Happy Holy Thursday, Holy Week, and in anticipation of Easter, Happy Easter. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. And in this chapel tonight, we pray for an increase of vocations to priesthood in the Archdiocese of Dubuque. We pray for the priests of the Archdiocese of Dubuque, retired and still in active ministry. We pray for them, especially today, on account of their ache to gather all the people around the table of the Lord to worship at Holy Mass. And we pray for all the faithful of the Archdiocese who hunger for the Eucharist. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord, for on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a author of many spiritual books by the name of Baroness Catherine de Hewitt Doherty. If you've not read any of her books, I highly recommend them, uh, especially one called Dear Father. But in one of her writings, she recounts a formative event from her childhood in a small town in Russia at the time of the Communist Revolution. She tells about how one Sunday, the Bolsheviks burst into the church during mass. They dragged the priest out to the town square and shot him before a firing squad. The following Sunday, the people gathered in church at the regular time. Someone read the scripture readings. Someone else read the mass prayers until they came to the words of consecration. And she said, at that time, there was only silence in the church, broken by the sound of soft weeping because there would be no Eucharist, because there was no priest. We feel their pain, don't we? Even though it isn't exactly the same situation, we feel their pain. They could gather, but had no priest. We have a priest, but we can't gather. But the result is the same in both situations. No Eucharist. And though our priests can still say Mass on their own and receive the Eucharist, it's little solace to them, knowing that their parishioners can't. A and even less solace if they have to celebrate Mass alone. Priests ache to gather with their people for Mass. They don't celebrate Mass as an act of personal devotion, although personal devotion is certainly involved in their celebration, 
They celebrate Mass to lead the people in the worship of God and to provide the people with spiritual food, food that heals, food that is a pledge to eternal life. This year, priests and people both feel the real absence of the Eucharist. The people miss Holy Communion. The priests, for their part, miss the Holy Community. So what do priests and people do? while waiting for the restriction on the size of assemblies to be lifted. Maybe today's gospel indicates how we can celebrate Eucharist in the meantime. The church selected a gospel passage for Holy Thursday that has always struck me as kind of peculiar that this gospel would be selected that makes no reference whatsoever to bread and wine, body and blood, but rather makes the connection between celebrating this, the Eucharist as a sacrament and celebrating the Eucharist as a way of life a way of life of, of service of others. When Jesus inaugurated the Eucharist at that Last Supper, he used, according to the other Gospels, he used wheat bread and grape wine. I think, and therefore it must be so, I think it's because that wheat has to be ground into flour in order to be made into bread, and grapes have to be crushed so that their juice can be made into wine. Which is not a sad thing, either for the grain of wheat or the, the bunch of grapes, but rather their fulfillment. They live to give. And after taking that bread and wine, Jesus said, do this in memory of me. In reference to taking bread and wine, wheat, bread, and grape, wine, and doing what he did at the Last Supper, repeating his words, invoking the Holy Spirit so that it may represent in a mystical way the sacrifice on Calvary Hill, that it would become his body and blood and for us spiritual food that heals and that is a pledge for eternal life. But he also said the same, more or less, as we heard in today's gospel after he got up from washing the feet of his disciples. This way of life, this way of service. Where is it? I've given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Do this in memory of me. Live to give to others in service. Do that in his memory. Live to give to others. That's, I think, how we can still celebrate the Eucharist while waiting for the restriction on the size of assemblies to be lifted. And hopefully it will be a way of celebrating Eucharist even 
afterwards. May it be so. needs of all men and women. For the members of the church, that though we aren't able to gather for prayer and worship, we will find ways to enjoy communion with God and with each other, and to be a light to a world in darkness. We pray to the Lord. for our government leaders on the local, state, and national level, that they make sound decisions in a timely manner and do their part to address people's fears. We pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for the gifts of the priesthood and the Eucharist, may we soon gather together to experience them in their fullness. We pray to the Lord. For those who live in fear for their lives or their livelihood, that God will stretch forth his hand to stop this pandemic, and soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For health care and pastoral care workers, that they will be kept safe from contagion, and that the people will receive from them the care, compassion, and reassurance they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost their jobs or health insurance, that people with means will continue to support financially their parish and the relief efforts of Catholic charities as they reach out to the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially from the coronavirus, that they receive healing and until then, strength to walk with Jesus under the weight of the cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For those in our families or among our friends who have died, especially from the coronavirus, that they experience the glory of God with all their desiring satisfied all at once, completely and forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks this day, especially for the gifts of priesthood and Eucharist. We pray for our priests of the Archdiocese, good and holy men that they are. We pray for our seminarians that they pursue the Lord's will, your will, uh, with regard to their state and life and for an increase of vocations. We pray for a deeper respect and reverence and devotion to the Holy Eucharist, that all of us, once we are able to gather together again, will not lightly absent ourselves from the the Sunday assembly and prepare ourselves to worthily receive the bread of life that heals and promises us eternal life. Help us, we pray, send your Holy Spirit to help us to open up these gifts that you have given them, to rejoice in them and to use them for your glory and for our sanctification and salvation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join in our preparation hymn, Ubi Caritas, in Jerry's song, number 374.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their honors to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, through blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation 
and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim, In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sea of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who seek in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners hope to be, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, 
and bid us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
extraordinary times when we are unable to receive the Eucharist and Holy Communion, the Church invites us to make a spiritual communion, uniting ourselves to Jesus through prayer. This version of the prayer was composed by St. Alphonsus Liguori. Please pray along. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So we will transfer the ciborium with the Blessed Sacrament to the tabernacle and we'll spend a moment of adoration, uh, not a prolonged moment because uh, we have another mass to celebrate, the same mass in Spanish. Our seminarians are so holy, they go to English mass and then Spanish mass and pray the English rosary and the Spanish rosary. I mean, they won't ever have to buy shoes because their feet just don't touch the ground. It's something else. So after the Spanish mass, um, these holy seminarians, uh, some of whom will uh, spend time in adoration before the tabernacle from 8 o'clock until midnight. And uh, a camera will be um, fixed on the tabernacle uh, so that if anybody in their home, if you want to uh, spend any time in adoration, I know it's going to be kind of weird, you know, adoring the Lord via live stream, but I think you'll make do. Um, please feel free to tune back in at 8 o'clock, anytime between 8 o'clock and midnight. Thank you.
soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, cure me. Within thy wounds, hide me. From the malicious snares of the enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come unto thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>